So it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing, absolutely nothing, while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching are not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. So that your faith might not rest in men's wisdom, but actually on God's power. You see, because it's not about us, but it's about Him. We're talking about supernatural lifestyle. How will people know that you are different to the rest of the world. Moses put it like this. He said, unless your presence goes with us, they will not know that we are different, that we are your people. And at the same time, he said, show me your glory. And God described his glory to him saying, my goodness, my mercy, is going to pass in front of you. God wants you and I to live that supernatural life. That's why He sent His Holy Spirit to equip you and I that we can walk in that life so the world can see you and I are different to the rest of the world. Not only to show our difference, but it is to bring a demonstration of God's love for the people. Because He loved us so much that He sent His Son to die for you and for me. He paid a price. There was one sacrifice and it was perfect forever, for always, never ever having to do another one. It was through Him. What he did on the cross, he shed his blood and he rose again. You and I need to value and honor the work that was done on the cross. Recognize the completeness of the work. Recognize the completeness of the resurrection. That we can walk in the power of God because it says, you shall receive power in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You see, He already comes to live on the inside of us through 1 Corinthians, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and chapter 3, they both say, your and my body is a temple to the Holy Spirit. God is with us always. Who likes fire? No, I think, I think the people who aren't putting up their hands will have to pray for them afterwards. I don't think it's not one person that doesn't like a braai place. Hmm? Hmm, we cook some meat on the fire. But I have a question for you like this. When there's a fire, the heat or the warmth that comes from it, can you separate the two? No, yes. Can we separate no, it's the same with God. Where His Holy Spirit is, the power is there. It cannot be separated from Him. The power that will accompany you is in the very presence of God. We are hosts to that presence. You and I need to recognize and understand and know how He is working on the inside of us. We need to spend time with Him. We need to read the Word. We need to pray. We need to separate ourselves. We need to discover what the Word says for you and for me. You know, because when we listen to what God says through His Word, through Him speaking to us, all those different ways, and we act in obedience 
there comes a spiritual release. You will find physical obedience will bring a spiritual release. Doesn't matter. Whatever you are doing, if you are obedient, Jesus was obedient in every single way. You see, he came as an exact representation of the Father for you and for me. All we have to do is look at Jesus, what he did. Because, yes, he is God, but he came as a man, filled with the Holy Spirit, so that you and I can replicate and duplicate those things that he did and to do more. Because he says, you shall do greater things than these. Because if you look, turn in your Bibles. To John chapter 14, verse 8. He says this, don't you, Philip asks him a question. He says, Lord, show us the Father and that'll be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you for such a long time, anyone has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me doing his work. Believe me when I say I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son and you may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Who needs something done? We all do. Whatever it is, for each and every person it could be different. Some could be the same. All we have to do is spend time with Him. Listen. Walk in obedience. And you'll find that things will change. Because you and I need to be not only full of the Holy Spirit, we need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Just as Jesus did. He was baptized in the Holy, he was baptized in chapter 3 in Luke, you can go and read it. And in the beginning of chapter 4 it says, and he went full of the Holy Spirit. He was being led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness where he was tested. Then in verse 14 it comes down to saying, it says, and he returned in the power. You see, you and I need to be full of and also have the power. Because without that, the people won't know that you and I are different. Because if you turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, you see, He sends the Holy Spirit and He gives us gifts. Who likes gifts? I do. You don't like gifts. I like gifts. What's the best thing about a gift? Eh? It's free. You don't have to pay any price for it. All you have to do is receive it. You see, and it says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says this in verse 1. Now about the spiritual gifts. And it says this, the special endowments of supernatural energy. We're talking to you about a supernatural lifestyle. Things that are not possible in the natural eye. I do not want you to be misinformed. He goes on to say, and I'm going to read from verse 4. Now there are distinctive varieties and distributions of endowments, gifts, extraordinary powers distinguishing certain Christians due to the power of divine grace operating in their souls by the Holy Spirit. And they vary, but the Holy Spirit remains the same. Then it goes on to say there's distinctive varieties of service and ministration, but it's the same Lord who is served. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it's the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. 
To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, and to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. And all these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. Now, you and I can do all those things. We can listen. But if we don't do it in love, it's worthless. Because if you and I don't operate in love, that's the, that is the pure motive that God came with, was love. Without love, we become nothing. Because I like reading that out of the Message Bible. I'm going to read to you 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. And if, it says this, If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all His mysteries and making everything plain as day. If I have faith that says to a mountain, jump and it jumps, but I don't love, I am nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've got nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, what I do, without love, I am bankrupt. Is what God says to you and me. You see, and then you go to verse chapter 14, and it says this in the first verse. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit. And then it goes on to say, especially prophecy. But those words there, if you go to the original language, they talk about zealously pursuing, going after with everything in you. It's not just a, oh, I'll follow or I'll do this. You see, God gives us a revelation. That's what chapter 12 is. You get, you get a revelation and an understanding of what the gifts are. But chapter 14 is telling you and me we have to earnestly pursue them. So what God is doing is gives you a revelation and that revelation becomes an invitation to encounter Him in the fullness of who He is. And it's a good thing. He wants you and me to pursue Him because in Jeremiah chapter 29, He says, you all know verse 11, don't you? Huh? I know the plans and the purpose of God. To do what? To prosper us. Okay, some people aren't sure. Do we all know what 12, 13 and the first part of 14 says? Turn in your Bibles, I'll, I'll read it to you quickly. <laughs> for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And then he says, I will be found by you. He's waiting for you and me to find him. Because with him is everything which can change and transform your and my life and change and transform the life of the people that we come into contact with. He's there for you and for me to change us, to transform us. You see, all He asks is that we are obedient and we step out in faith because obedience is an act of worship. We surrender our will to His and we worship Him for who He is. And we... Go with what he says. And you see, it becomes faith which is going into action. We step out in faith. 
Because faith can't be yesterday. It can't be tomorrow. It's only today. God is waiting for you and for me. All He wants is us. He's inviting us all over to do these things. You know, Mother Teresa said this in her quote. She said, yesterday has gone. Tomorrow has not yet come. We only have today. Let us begin. God's saying to you and to me, let us begin. Let us begin to show the world that we are different in everything that we do. We have a God who's alive, who loves us. And it's very easy. All we have to do is ask Him. Have you ever asked Him? He's waiting to answer. But I have a question I must ask first. Is there anybody here who doesn't know this God who loves us? Who sent His Son to die for us, paid the price for our sins. He came to set us free. Is there anybody like that? Because you see, you need to receive Him and become part of the family of God. When that happens, then you can go to the next step, which is ask the Holy Spirit to come and be part of your life. Is there anybody who doesn't know Him who wants to know Him? Who paid the price in full for your and my life? If there isn't anybody, then we're going to move to the next step. Look at your neighbor and nudge them and say, have you given your life to Jesus? No, that's not actually the next step, but that is a step. In Luke chapter 11, verse 9, it says this, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Do you want to ask Him? Because I want to lead you in a prayer. If you, if you are happy to be led in a prayer, let's ask Him for more. And if you are comfortable with that, you can stand. If you're not, you can sit. But for those of you that want more, you can stand. And we can ask Him for more. Because it says, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. And it says, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Heavenly Father, as we stand here before you today, we thank you for the finished work of your Son, Jesus Christ, and that you send your Holy Spirit to come and touch us, to change us, to be with us. So now I want each and every one of you Hold your hands out in front of you and say this after me. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Today, I invite you to come into my life. I open 
my heart to your presence. I invite you to be my best friend, my counselor, my help, my very best friend to teach me your ways so I may find favor in your eyes. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to fill me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet to my very fingertips till you are overflowing through my body that it becomes rivers of living water. I thank you for this that I can be a special messenger of your love, your mercy, and I accept your gifts today. And I thank you, Father, for all these things. And we ask today that this be done in Jesus' name. Amen.